And the final jobs report ahead of the State of the Union, far better than anyone expected. Job gains blew past predictions with 517,000 jobs added. That's nearly tripling expectations. The unemployment rate fell to 3.4 percent, the lowest in half a century when Richard Nixon was president. President Biden today calling it a big victory. Here's where we stand. The strongest job growth in history, the lowest unemployment rate in 54 years, manufacturing rebounding at a faster rate than in the last 40 years, inflation coming down, real races, real wages going up, but moderately going up, not going through the roof, the economy growing at a solid clip. Put simply, I would argue the Biden economic plan is working. But a positive jobs growth report makes the Fed's job fighting inflation even harder, with core inflation still not coming down. So let's get right to CNBC senior economics reporter Steve Leisman and Douglas holtz Eakin, president of the American Action Forum, former chief economist of the President's Council of Economic Advisors, as well as former director of the Congressional Budget Office. So, Steve, these job gains are across the board. The labor market, key to how much further the Fed needs to lift interest rates. And that was certainly signaled by Chairman Powell just on Wednesday that they're not done, contrary to what some people in the markets may have thought. Yeah, the market uh, thinks the Fed ought to back off and, and, and actually has rate cuts built in by the end of the year. Uh, Fed Chair Jay Powell told him, uh, don't get uh, too uh, married to that forecast because he doesn't see it happening, in part because he wanted to see, and this is before the number came out, this was Wednesday, he wanted to see the job market get a little weaker, uh, create some slack in the job market so we didn't have these strongly rising wages impa impacting inflation. In fact, what's happened, you said it well, Andrea, this is a broad-based uh, gain in jobs. I can't seem to find anything particularly that, that juiced it up. Sometimes we get a quirky number and it's a seasonal adjustment thing or not, but it's across the board. And one other thing worth pointing out, we were kind of confident that the job market is weakening back in December. The work week had gotten lower. Temporary help, which is a leading indicator of jobs, had gone down. Almost all those things reversed this month. So uh, we seem to be back in the races for a, a strong hiring, and the Fed is probably going to have to lean against that a bit. And they just did a quarter point, to Douglas holtz I mean, you worked in a Republican White House as well as, of course, the Bipartisan Congressional Budget Committee. But how do you get core inflation down when the jobs market is this strong? And, well, you know, he's, he, Jerome Powell is aiming for 2 percent inflation. Yeah, and he's not going to get there this year. This is a, a long, long uh, struggle. So uh, first thing I'd say is I think Steve's right. This is, there's a lot of quirkiness in these numbers. I would take this report seriously, but not literally. These numbers are, are really just too they big They could be readjusted ways. a month yeah. from now. But the most important characteristic is that we got very strong jobs growth in both reports, and we didn't see a big acceleration in wages. Wage, wage growth continued to moderate somewhat. Chairman Powell has linked wages to inflation in the service sector, which is our problem right now. And so that's a good news story from the Fed's point of view. Strong growth, not strong inflation pressures. The proof will be in the pudding. You know, on Valentine's Day, we get the consumer price index. It'll be a lovely moment. We can see whether the, the price pressures are actually easing. So, Steve Leisman, we'll see on Valentine's Day whether <laughs> this is something we can love and whether we can send a Valentine to Jay Powell. But uh, from your perspective, now, you know, what is the next step? Because the soft landing was always going to be hard to achieve. How few have there even been in history? But now what does he do? Not many. Is he closer? Yeah. I mean, well, first of all, I have to say, I've, I take my friend Doug holtz uh seriously and literally. Um, <laughs> and I would just like to point out that, that right now, what we have is we have a mismatch, a problem in the Fed's idea, right? Which is that Doug just said it. We have wage growth kind of coming down even amid this strong job market. So it may be that the Fed's essential idea that there's this linkage between the job market being tight and inflation could be wrong. And the answer might be, Andrea, that we have to just undo those supply chain problems we had, put people actually back to work so that they can provide the supply that was out there. Maybe even China coming back online could help a little bit. So it may not be so linked to the wages. The other thing, Andrea, worth pointing out is a lot of the job growth is still coming from some of those sectors that are below their pre-pandemic levels, like leisure and hospitality was responsible for 128,000, 74,000 from government education, 79,000 from nurses. And you can't say we have too many nurses in this. 
this country. So there is some legitimate job growth that's needed here to get back to where they were. And I don't think it's right for the Fed to stand in front of that. And Doug, you ran the CBO and know these relationships better than anyone. Uh, you've got a debt ceiling crisis looming. There are a lot of things that can screw up any soft landing. China is one <laughs> of them. We've seen that today, an international crisis, whatever Vladimir Putin does. But most immediately, a debt ceiling crisis if it goes off the cliff and a downgrading, another downgrading of the U.S. credit. Yes, and so uh, to be clear, there's no disagreement. I haven't heard anyone say we shouldn't raise or suspend the debt limit. But to not do that would be catastrophic. I've heard some Congress members say that. There's a disagreement about the future of the spending patterns for the U.S. government, the fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is on an unsustainable track, so somebody's going to have to, to uh, change that direction at some point. The question is whether this is the moment to make that deal. And whether there's a, a sort of normal reaction where the president says, let's do it in parallel, you've got a budget process, but... Is, does, does Speaker McCarthy have the flexibility, given the people in his coalition, to make those kinds of compromises? Uh, we're going to find out. I mean, there's no question about it. Um, you know, the vote put everybody on notice that the margins are tight, and uh, this has to get done. So uh, stay tuned. Thank you so much, Steve Leisman and Doug, and Doug Holtz. Thanks to both of you. Pleasure.